Oh, I've been farming since about 1967, I think it was, when I left school. And we previously come from a mixed cropping farm with sheep and stock, and I'm not a stock person, so all I wanted to do was just grow crop. <laughs> and, to, and we want some better soil to grow crop on in a different irrigation system. So that's why we, we came here. Yeah, Maxine and I have been on the farm. She does all the paperwork. I'm a bit adverse to paperwork and don't like doing it. So I mean, it is a team effort, and she's given me all sorts of encouragement to shift and do those things. So, yeah, yeah, and I couldn't be where I am today without it. Working with farmers is the best part of the job. I really enjoy the relationship I have with farmers. I've been here a long time, so you grow relationships with farmers. Some farmers, I'm working with the third generation of farmer. What makes Eric special, I guess, is that passion and that, that desire to do better. Um, and I think his desire to lift the industry. You know, he's not just good at growing wheat, he's really good at growing all his other crops as well. He's a perfectionist. Our local territory manager, David Weath, has worked with Eric for many years. And through this, they've formed a very close relationship. And it was really through this relationship that Eric was encouraged to have a go at the world record. The value of David's assistance and the Bayer assistance is very good because um, the knowledge on chemicals and, and the products we're using and the, the value of that technical support means a lot because you don't have to be up with everything that goes on and it's just to get other ideas that perhaps we don't see or, or think about and, and especially in the fungicides and herbicides and yeah I couldn't function without a lot of that. We haven't sat still since 2017 when we achieved the, the previous world record. We've been basically monitoring what we've been doing, we've been looking at different varieties. Every year we sow three different varieties and just see how they go on the farm. So making sure that uh, there's no disease. Our insecticide programs are very robust. Also we can't have competition so our herbicide programs are pretty robust. We've gone to liquid N or liquid nitrogen for this last world attempt and the reason for that was basically it gave us uh, uniform coverage across the whole field. And the liquid has certainly made things a lot more even. And I think the other thing is that the precision ag we've been doing over the years um, has achieving results as well. So I think you know we're getting less variations in the field and everything just sort of tied together, I think. Our products aren't used entirely without others being used as well. But I think it does demonstrate some of the effectiveness of our products in um, controlling the pests and diseases and weeds that, that can limit the yield potential of the crops. So to have our product used in, the, in a world record attempt that's successful is, is, is very great for Bayer in New Zealand. So 217 yield was uh, 16.791 tonnes to the hectare. Uh, this time around we've done uh, 17398. Uh, so it's a lift of uh, 607 kgs. When I first started working in this job, we were getting four tonne of wheat per hectare and now we're you know, getting into the 17 tonnes. Things keep changing, technology keeps changing, varieties keep changing, so, you know, and you can see things you've missed in the previous attempt to, to do better in the next one, so I think the whole combination of things like that, just you just think, well, yeah, we can always do better, and that's what it is. Okay, so, so what do you need to achieve a world record? Well, first, the right paddock that's got the right fertility, has been managed properly, and is set up basically for that, for that world record. Um, you need the right variety, you need to have the right sowing rate, you need to have the right plant density and the right number of tillers per square metre. You need to keep it clean, you need to look after its nutrition the whole way through, and you need to monitor, um, and then you need to also harvest it on a good day. It takes a lot of work to achieve the world record and a lot of input and just the, you know, the team from Bayer, because I, mean, I certainly couldn't do without them. I mean, that's essential. So Guinness's requirements start basically uh, before you put the crop in the ground and, and that's what a lot of farmers don't understand. Uh, it starts uh, with a survey before you plant the crop. You then um, survey the field, send them the survey and then sow the, sow the field. So it's a 14 month process. Then collect all the data that you've done all the way through the attempt, all your records of what you've applied to the crop, all your monitoring data and you submit all that to Guinness after harvest and hope that they approve it. Um, I think what it means to Canterbury and the New Zealand arable farmers is that we're a very small industry uh, and we're a very good industry and Canterbury in particular has some very good soil types and um, you know they're some of the best farmers in the world and I've often thought that I've, I've been fortunate enough to travel and um, 
see some of the farming in other parts of the world. And I think Canterbury has, the, you know, has an ideal climate and it's very good for the New Zealand arable industry because it is an industry that's sort of forgotten about in, in many respects, but it is in a very, it's a very important industry because we're growing quite a bit of the world's radish seed, we're growing a lot of the world's carrot seed, a lot of the world's vegetable seeds like spinach, red beet, um, pack joy or bok joy, and then there's all the grass seeds that some are exported, some are turf grasses and those things, and it just reflects that New Zealand is not a, New Zealand arable industry is not a backward industry, it's a very forward industry, and, and yeah, and I'm quite proud to be involved in that industry because it, it is a good industry and it's very important to the country or to the New Zealand farming situation. So what it means to me personally to be involved with World Record is basically to show farmers that it can be done and um, that they should aspire to lift their own yields and that's what these records do. They show farmers that they can do better and people can achieve it on their own farm. The future of arable farming is in New Zealand is very good. You know, we're achieving higher yields per, per hectare or less, less area. So, I mean, that's always very sustainable and that's what's necessary in the world today because the world population keeps growing and New Zealand can play a part in that. I'd just like to say big congratulations to Eric and Maxine for achieving this world record. Um, they had the record previously and they've now increased it. So I just think it's a wonderful achievement and it just shows the dedication of, of Eric to, you know, and the agronomic skill that he's got to grow high yielding wheat crops.